everybody and welcome to another episode of the supreme decisions and today i want to talk to you about something to add some clarity to why we use supreme court cases and we use supreme court decisions and i'm teaching not concept but application of these decisions of these monikers that are placed within these um decisions and why is it I teach the way I do for the most part? One of the things I've learned is that people learn better when you're giving it to them in small bites because you're able to grasp the totality of concepts when you're not given to it, given all of it at one time. And that's why I tell people, you know, it's the way I give it to you is in small bites, but it's a full meal. And today I want to talk about the force of the supremacy clause. And I'm going to start off with something that you've heard me say before. And it's Cooper v. Aaron, 358 U.S. 1, 1958. The states are bound by the court's decisions and cannot choose to ignore them. Basically, the states are bound by the Supreme Court decisions and are not allowed to ignore them and what happens is you have this thing that's set up once there's a decision that's made because they're derived from the total outlook of what the God-given right is and how it is applied throughout life but it sets up stair desis or desisis and that means to stand by things decided. Now, many of us have no idea exactly why that is, what that is, where that is. But it's the understanding that the Supreme Court case decision, not the things that are within the case itself, but the actual decisions are what cannot be ignored no matter what the court because of the supreme law of the land which means there is no law that's higher than that and what it does it sets up the doctrine of precedent generally what happens because you heard me say in my um, state case where I was charged with RICO in Georgia and I won it was the first RICO case in Georgia that set the precedent because it was the first one. Now that decision, the application that was done throughout that case to lead to the not guilty decision allows people to use that case itself as the crux of things that cannot be ignored in Georgia when you're dealing with RICO or racketeering influence corrupt organizations. Now, we also understand how it v rose and what it encompasses. But what I want to make clear is just as I spoke about my RICO case in Georgia, it was a uh, superior court case. And what ended up happening, I did a removal. But then we all ignored the removal and I fought it in a superior court. Now, the reason why I brought that up is because when you're pushing a federal issue in a state court, which your civil rights are, which your civil liberties are, they're federal court issues. You are sending the message of the state cannot have jurisdiction over that matter. Why? Because the federal court deals with federal issues. Keep that in mind, because even when we're dealing with these state police officers, the issues we are dealing with are federal, because the laws they are supposed to be abiding by are federal. And when we are doing this, we're pushing that, we're enforcing that. But, listen, however, if you choose to remain in a state court fighting a federal issue, you are offering implied consent for the adjudication of the matter and the ruling of the lower court. Because again, I spoke with a lot of people and this is one of the issues because they don't want to go to federal court. So they're leaving federal issues 
in state court after bringing them up the state court knows they do not have jurisdiction over federal issues. However, if you're remaining in the state court, you are now playing by the state court's rules. You are not dealing in a federal instance. Although, when you're bringing up these federal issues, the states cannot choose to ignore them, but you as your own competent defense are setting forth the fact that you are saying yes it's a federal issue but we'll go we'll play them by your rules and it's okay because you are the one making the choice to stay so keep that in mind i appreciate you guys for donating apple pay venmo google wallet and you know my favorite cash app. Hit the link in the description if you don't already have it. Start enjoying the benefits and we both get paid. So keep going, let's keep growing. Until next time.